Welcome back to Coloring Through the Bible. My name is Kegan Harkins, and today I want to talk to you about being prepared. You know, if, if we wait until the moment arises to try and be prepared, we're probably going to stumble at the very least, fail definitely a possibility. I live in Montana, and it's wintertime in Montana, which means that the other day it was 30 degrees below zero. And we're prepared for it. We know how to, to live in this cold climate. We chose to be here. But you have to, you do have to be prepared for it. You're not going to just walk outside when it's 30, 40 degrees below zero and start your car. You know, you have to, you have to plug it in. You have to let it warm up. You have to do all of these things to ensure that that car is going to start when you need it to start. And the same thing is true about us. We need to be prepared. We need to be always ready to do what God wants us to do. We always need to be prepared for whatever life throws at us because we don't know what's going to happen later on today. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know who God is going to lead in our path. And if we aren't hot for the Lord or ready to give an answer of the refreshing and the peace and the joy that we have, ready to share that with somebody, then we're not really doing any good. And I want to talk to you about Revelations chapter 3. In Revelations chapter 3, there are these letters to the different churches. And chapter 3 has this letter to the church of Laodicea. And when you first read it, I always just kind of misunderstood really what it meant until I did some digging and did some research and understood what the people who originally would have read it would have instantly understood. Sometimes we miss things because we live in 2018. We don't know the same things. We don't, we don't have the same experiences that the original readers would have just instantly understood. And so when we do a little bit of digging, we can go, oh, that makes sense. Now I get what you're saying, Lord. So I want to share this with you. It's Revelations chapter 3, and I just want to read a couple verses. Starting in verse 15, it says, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you're a lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. One translation actually says I'm going to vomit you out. When I was a kid and I would hear this verse, I just thought that is so gross. How nasty do you have to be that God's like, I'm going to just vomit you out. I want you to be hot or cold. And I always misunderstood it because in my mind, being hot for the Lord was a good thing. And being cold for the Lord was a bad thing. So it was almost like I thought that this passage was saying either, you know, be on fire for the Lord or hate the Lord, but pick one side or the other. You have to get off that fence. And in fact, I've heard sermons that talk about get off the fence. God doesn't want you to just be half in the world and half in his kingdom. You, you got to pick a side, which that's true, but that's not what the original readers would have gotten from this letter. See, the original readers lived in a town that was close to two other cities that were world-renowned cities. And the one city, and I'm going to butcher this name because I'm horrible at these kind of names, but I, I believe you would pronounce it Hierapolis, regardless of however you pronounce it. It was famous, world famous for its hot springs. Now, we actually have a town in Wyoming that my husband and I went to on our honeymoon called Thermopolis, and it is also known for its hot springs. And it's, it's this great little community, and there's just hot springs everywhere. And you can just go, and it's so relaxing, and it's so rejuvenating. And if you're having, you know, arthritis, or your back hurts, or, or your muscles are tight, you just sit in these natural hot springs, and it's way better than a hot tub. I mean, the, the minerals that are in the water, it just does something, and it makes you feel better. So that's what this town that by Laodicea, this, this Heropolis, that's what it was known for. It was known for these hot springs. And people would come from all over to sit in these mineral hot tub things because they believed they had healing properties. So they were a beacon of healing. They were a beacon of restoration. Does this sound like something that we should be in our lives? We're supposed to be a beacon of healing. You know, if, if we know somebody is sick, just saying, oh, I'll pray for you, that's not cutting it. Do it, like right then. You know, show people that you're hot for the Lord. Show people that your God is a beacon of healing. 
remind people that this isn't out of his wheelhouse, that God is a God who heals, not just who healed in the New Testament and the Old Testament, not just who healed thousands of years ago, but who's healing now. This is definitely something that God is capable of doing. And not just physical healing, emotional healing, physical, emotional, spiritual. God can handle anything we throw at him. You know, when you sit in those mineral hot springs, you just relax. There's something about the minerals that's in that hot water that just brings peace. And we're supposed to be hot for the Lord. We're supposed to be drawing people to us so that we can share this peace, this healing that comes from God. And the other town that would have instantly popped into these people's minds when they read this letter was the town of Colossae. And what this town was famous for was quite the opposite. It was famous for its cold spring water. Now this is before air conditioning, this is before refrigeration. So to have a place when it's 120 degrees outside and you've been traveling and you're dusty and you're hot and you're tired and then you can go and you can get this cool, clean, crisp glass of refreshing water. That makes a big difference. You know, I know it's really cold right now because it's winter time, but we're think back to summertime when it's hot and there is nothing tastes better than that cold glass of water when you've been out doing yard work or working in the sun. You just, it just cools you. It comforts you. It gives you the strength. It like perks you up and helps you to keep going and, and gives you the ability to, to keep working because it's that refreshing drink. That's what we're supposed to be too. We're supposed to be this beacon for the tired. Think of yourself like the Statue of Liberty. You know, bring me your tired and huddled masses. We're supposed to be standing up there, this this light on a hill saying, I've got peace. Let me tell you about this refreshing drink of water. His name is Jesus. Let me tell you about how no matter what you're going through, God can just soothe you. He can just fill you up and give you strength to keep going when you don't think that you're going to make it through. That's what it means to be cold for the Lord, to be this beacon of hope, refreshing, joy, and peace. So that's what God is saying when he says, I wish you were either hot or cold. You got to do something. You need to be this light on a hill. You need to be changing the world that you have been placed there. God uses us to reach out to his people. But if we're not doing anything, then we're not doing anything. I mean, think about it. If the people who owned these, these hot springs didn't let anybody get in them. Can you imagine you owned a hot spring and you knew that if you were to just sit in this water, it would heal your arthritis, it would help your bad back, it would relax your sore muscles, but no, you can't get in it. Nobody can get in it. They're just going to bubble there and you can look at it, but you can't actually feel the healing powers of those waters. Or how about if you see a weary traveler and they are just sweating and you're sweating, it's hot and you're dying of thirst, your tongue is swollen, your animals are so thirsty and you know that they're going to die soon if they don't get something to drink and there's this pool of water but you don't let anybody drink. That seems silly. You would never think of that. You would never conceive of doing something like that but we do that all the time when the people around us are hurting are in need and we don't share Christ. He's that healing water. He's that refreshing peace giver and we keep him to ourselves when the world needs him. So I want to encourage you today to be hot, be cold, be something. Be on fire for the Lord. Be a refreshing voice of the Lord to help those weary travelers, to help those people who are in need. Be prepared for what's going to come at you. Be prepared for the people that God's going to place in your life. We can't wait until we're in the middle of it to decide we're going to crack open our Bible, decide we're going to, you know, turn on the hot tub and start getting it bubbly. We need to be always ready. 
Because we don't know that in the next five seconds, somebody's going to call me or knock on my front door and they're going to need something. Well, have I read God's word? Do I have what they need to hear? Have I spent time praying? Can I hear the whisper of the Holy Spirit? We need to be prepared because we are God's hands and feet. So just like you wouldn't dream of walking out in 60 below zero weather and starting your car and driving down and you wouldn't run outside without shoes on when it's that cold, we shouldn't live our lives without being plugged into the Lord. Because for us to work at our optimal positioning, for us to do everything that God has called us to do, we need to stay in God's word. We need to stay warmed up. We need to stay cool. I love you guys, and I hope that you've been encouraged by this word today. Until I see you again, have a truly blessed day.